Hello, I'm Michael Glass from MichaelGlass.com, where we focus on making informed decisions about our financial future. This is our Forex Technical Analysis Trading Plan for the pound dollar, the euro dollar, and the dollar franc. Before we pull up our video, we always want to start off our disclosures. Any symbols you see today should not be referred as a trading recommendation. No matter what foreign investing you choose, stock, forex, futures, options, they all have a level of risk associated with them. You can't lose all of your money. Any strategy we show today are for informational purposes only, future results not guaranteed. And finally, any investment decision you make is solely your own responsibility, trade at your own risk. As we said, this is our forex technical analysis trading plan for the pound dollar, the euro dollar, and the dollar franc. In each video, we look at the prior session's price action to come up with key support and resistance price levels. We'll review the gold chart to come up with leading sentiment. We'll try to create a low volatility and inside bar watch list, and we have an education spotlight at the end. Please send your feedback and comments to contact at dmbfx.com, and let's head to the charts. As usual, we are starting off with the gold chart. We can see that we are continuing to make that assertion. Gold is still getting the, uh, the flight play where people are coming out of the dollar going into gold, coming out of a lot of currencies and really going into gold. So it's still moving up. Uh, we got a little breathing period, but it's continuing to move. So you have to continue to watch it. And even though we had this several days of consolidation on our hourly, we can see that we have moved up here at the end of the day, possibly consolidating again here as we get into the new trading session. But overall, gold is strong even as it is in the overbought category. So a strong uh, gold means probably a weak dollar. Weak dollar means our GP, our pound dollar uh, pair is going to be strong and that's what we see here. Now what's interesting about this and where we stop today um, is if you slide on over you can see the, uh, the wicks so you can kind of see this is where that last swing high was a little wick here and that is exactly where we are right now so um, this may be a point of uh, resistance that, that means that's where sellers in the past have found value and pushed it down even our wick wickedness here um, you know again sellers in this 1.64 range to 6.5 uh, range are finding value and pushing down but again, we have a weak dollar, and there's even uh, there's not going to be any certainty about the dollar until they make a decision about the debt ceiling. It has to happen by August second, and at this rate, it probably won't happen until August second. So we can see uh, as we come over to our hourly, uh, clearly in a uh, sell zone, clearly way away for our long-term moving average. But this is an example of. Just because we're in a sell zone doesn't mean we're going down. Just because we're away from a long-term moving average doesn't mean we're going to pull back to it. What we told you to do yesterday was to mark the high, mark the low, and trade it. And we broke the high, and you know we haven't looked back. So um, you know you have to start watching those these periods of consolidation. This was also uh, a part of our low volatility watch list. We can see that the dollar is still underneath so the pound is still in control we can see that the dollar is averaging down the pound is averaging up we got that divergence and as soon as we got that divergence that's when we really took off and of late our probability indicators in the middle not really giving us either signal but the most dominant and most important thing is who's in control the pound as we switch over to the euro dollar we're going to see a similar thing. We can scroll over just a little bit, see our little wicks here, grab our horizontal tool, plop it in there, and that's basically right where we are right now. Again, this is a place where although the dollar is weak, we may need another catalyst to get us into a new auction area. Right now, we're in this really big auction area of about 1.45 down to about 1.14, one point. 412. You know, there's this very big range that we're in, and we may need a little bit more catalyst to get us above this. So, again, obviously, we're in a sell zone, well off our long term moving average, but the euro is in control. Uh, dollar averaging down, euro averaging up. 
So uh, that's all we have to watch. What's going to be our catalyst? We're at a resistance point, just like the uh, pound dollar. Uh, but as long as the dollar is in control, I'm sorry, as long as the euro is in control, we can continue to see this pair move higher. Finally, if those pairs are moving higher, then our dollar franc is going to continue moving lower. And that's exactly what we're seeing right now. We can see that the franc is in control. We can see just the opposite. Even though we're clearly in a buy area, even though we're clearly below the long-term moving average, that doesn't mean we're absolutely going to positively move higher. Um, the franc is going to stay in control. Same thing, franc averaging higher, dollar averaging lower. So again, what we have to watch over these, possibly for another week, is what's going to be our catalyst. Um, are we going to get a decision? Are we going to get a deal about the debt ceiling? What's going to be a catalyst to get us to move higher or move lower as far as the dollar is concerned? As we come to our watch list, we'll first go to our low volatility using our one hour time frame with Bollinger Bands. And there we have the dollar franc that we're going to be watching. And we currently do not have anything for our inside bar watch list. As we move to our education spotlight, we want to talk about one of the good old fashioned statements that the trend is your friend. And, and that is certainly uh, a great advice for our new traders out there that there's no need to be the fist swimming upstream against you know the momentum of what the professionals are doing. And not only are you swimming upstream against them, but often they're sitting just like the bear in our picture here, waiting to pounce on you when you jump. So, uh, and this is not to say that you can't do counter trend trades and you shouldn't be trading against the trend, but what it is saying, and we've talked about this, is understanding the playing field and understanding where the professionals are. And you don't want to be the fish jumping where the professionals are right there to wipe out your, take you out on stops or, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, scaring you out of your trade, which is why we're spending so much time talking about uh, a trader's mindset and not just a system is what's key to making you a successful trader. Having uh, the the psychological capital to enact your system is almost more important, if not more important, than actually knowing what your system is. So we want to make sure that we're not setting ourselves up to be taken advantage of by the professionals, by the market makers, by um, hiding our stops by entering at the right price, um, knowing our capital, using the right trading system for our capital and not um, uh, over, uh, overspending our accounts, really having everything in place so that you can properly trade the system. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. And we certainly have some resources available for you, whether or not you want a free video course, coaching, um, cash back rebates for your forex trades or even automatic signals we have all that for you as we focus on giving you high uh, probability focused trading at dmbfx.com thanks guys and i'll see you next time